Registered representatives offer securities through Securities America, Inc., member FINRA SIPC. Financial advisors offer advisory services through Securities America Advisors, Inc. Forest Hills Financial, Inc. and Securities America are separate entities. This is the Keeping Your Money Show with Jamie Westenberger and Bart Steinler. Good morning. Welcome to the Keep Your Money Show. I'm Jamie Westenbarger, joined as always by my esteemed colleague, Mr. Bart Steinler. Bart, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Jamie. It's another million dollar morning. Indeed it is, especially if a million dollars is your idea of uh, cold and gross and snowy. Well, you may need it to pay your heating bills this winter. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, but this is the Keep Your Money Show, where we cut through all the bulls, the booyahs, Bells, whistles, honks, and horns to get you to the information that actually helps you move towards retirement. We've got a great show today. We're going to talk about why is the insurance industry fighting so hard against the fiduciary rule? Why a trust is a great estate planning tool, even if you're not rich? The extraordinary upside potential and potential downside potential uh, of sequence of return risk in retirement. And with Social Security reform on the table, Here's why those earning more than 400000 might be in for a shock. And even if you're not earning over 400000 kind of some significant Social Security reform being bantered around in Congress right now. That seems to be piggybacking the Medicare for all. So mm-hmm. uh, some, some interesting potential developments there. We'll talk more about that as well. If you may seem part of the show, you can find us on the web. Just go to keepingyourmoney.com. You can also find it on all of our uh, podcast partners, iTunes, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. You're welcome to contact the show. You can do that by phone at 888-98-MONEY. That's 888-986-6639. We don't take calls on the air, but somebody does answer the phone 24 hours a day. And of course, you can email us, info at keepingyourmoney.com. Before you jump into the stories today... Can I can I squeeze a little antidote in here? Of course. I had a real interesting thing happen this week. So um, my wife and I have a gas fireplace. And, of course, being as cold as, has, as it has been this winter, we've been using it quite a bit. And then all of a sudden it stopped working. So um, Kathy called a place and they said, well, you probably you know need a new starter for it or whatever the part was. And um, that's going to cost $179.00. Plus the installation, and and so if you want to go ahead and give us your you know credit card number now, we'll go ahead and buy the new starter, and then we'll come out and install it. And so she said, "Well, what if it's not the new starter?" And the guy goes, "Well, it probably is." And so she says, well, "Let me get back to you." So you know we did some digging, came up with another gentleman who who works on fireplaces, and he came out, did a wonderful job, and it turns out it wasn't the starter, but he actually came out and looked at the fireplace and inspected all the different parts that make it work and discovered that it wasn't the starter, that it needed a, a couple parts needed to be cleaned because of it wasn't making a good connection. So, and many times it probably is the starter, why mm-hmm. you were lumped into that category. Yeah. But obviously you being an individual and your fireplace not being like every other fireplace yeah, wasn't your situation. And it's the kind of the same philosophy that we have here at Forest Hills Financial with all the uh, different advisors who work for us. And, and it's that, you know, we want you to come in and talk to us and, and we want to learn about you. And we want to learn what your situation is before we develop a financial plan for you. And I think a lot of times uh, one of the things that you see in this industry that makes it so frustrating is that you're going into some place and they have a um, off-the-shelf product for you, an off-the-shelf portfolio, an off-the-shelf insurance policy, and and before you even walked in the door, it's more of a sales process, like we're going to sell mm-hmm. this person this thing. We have to get so many of these sold every month to another to make our quota, instead of a consultative uh, approach of let's learn what this person needs. Let's look in the future and what they're going to need in the future. Let's kind of develop a plan that's going to get them to where they need to be. And I think that dovetails into this conversation about the fiduciary standard actually really well, almost like you planned that. Um, (laughs) 
<laughs> but um, some things just fall into place in life when you yeah. work hard, you know. Financial Advisor magazine put out an interesting article the other day, and they're highlighting the fact that these insurance industry organizations are fighting against a broad-based fiduciary standard. And if you're mm-hmm. not familiar with the battle that's been going on with fiduciary, the idea behind fiduciary is if you're a fiduciary, you are putting your client's interests first. You have to do what is in the best interest of your client, period. Okay. Now, what's confusing a lot of times for people is many of the billboards and seminars and um, things that are going on where, you know, they're calling themselves retirement specialist or retirement expert or financial professional. They're not actually financial advisors. They are not securities licensed. They're not properly licensed to help you with what you're actually doing. Um, Or they have loose licensing where they've gotten the easiest one possible and that's it. And so the insurance industry does not want those people, many times simply just life insurance agents, to be held to the same standard as a financial advisor, basically when they're selling you an annuity, okay? Right. Because their argument is it's very difficult when all you can sell is annuities to say that you're offering a fiduciary, well, it's impossible actually, to say that you're a fiduciary when all you can offer is one product, similar to what you said. If right. all the fire, all the fireplace place could do was sell you the starter, they couldn't really say they're a full service fireplace repair place you know well it's kind of the same thing if the only product available uh at the dinner seminar you went to at roos chris was an annuity guess what they're annuity salesmen they can't be a fiduciary so the life insurance industry the major players in this um are are spending millions of dollars lobbying congress to try and be excluded from having to be a fiduciary and what's crazy about it is the argument here is that the least qualified people the least licensed people that are selling the most complex products should have the lowest standard of fiduciary responsibility. I mean, that's absurd. It's like saying the, you know, the, the least qualified people should meet the least standards. I mean, it's, it's crazy. And I, I don't have specific statistics to back this up, but just from being in the industry and looking at things that people have done and looking at of things that people are considering doing, it's really where I see the most abuse. It's where I see the most um, the most sales tasks, tactics being used. The most well, scare over, tactics a lot of times. Yeah, the most the overselling of, the of a product. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes a product may not be a bad product, but that doesn't mean it should make up you know sixty or seventy percent of your strategy. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that were actually stated in this article kind of made me laugh because what they're saying is actually, in my opinion, the exact opposite. Okay, Mm -hmm. so for instance, they say as a product that is designed as a long term retirement solution, most annuities are sold on a commission basis. Well, my argument would be as a long term retirement solution, uh, a quality advisor would want to be compensated then on that over time so they could continue to assist and advise on this product. Right. What happens a lot of times with these is you see a life insurance agent take a big commission up front and never talk to that person again because they have no reason to, you know, other than they're conscious. Um, they also say that according to the Limra survey, uh, the fiduciary uh, regulation of advisors may have dropped or turned away from smaller advisors, resulting in as many as 4 million middle-class households losing access to information they need to ensure a secure retirement. Well, here's... From smaller investors. From smaller investors. But, But here's the thing about that, okay? They're saying... They're using that as a reason that most small investors then buy annuities. And in my argument would be... That's a terrible conclusion to jump to. Uh, Just because someone's a small investor doesn't mean they should be relegated to only having to deal with the life insurance agent who's going to sell them an annuity. I mean, that's kind of their argument here. Go ahead and regulate the the advisors, you know, who handle multiple investments and products because they're not going to want, uh, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, who I will gladly sell an annuity. I mean, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. And, you know, I mean, we look at different advisory practices all the time and, and, you know, it's a misnomer to um, to think that, you know, advisors only work with extremely high net worth people. Do they work with extremely high net worth people? Absolutely. 
is the bulk of their business extremely high net worth people? Probably not. No, because there aren't that many extremely high net worth people. <laughs> I right, mean, honestly, right. right? So, I mean, you, you really, um, I mean, I get a question a lot of times, you know, uh, I'll have people say, well, I don't know if I have enough money to work with you. Well, you, you probably do. And it's, it's not so much how much you have in, in order to work with me, but, you know, what's your attitude about wanting to be successful? Absolutely. You know, Nate and I met with this lady the other day. She came in. She had called off mm-hmm. the radio show, and that was her thing. You know, I don't know if I'm even the right person for you. I'm just kind of starting with stuff. And I said, look, you know, m- my criteria for someone that I'm going to work with is uh, do they have a positive attitude uh, about saving you know, are they are they interested in, you know, budgeting themselves so they can properly save for retirement? Do they value my advice? You know, you can disagree with me, but I'm not going to work with somebody who just wants to argue with me all the time. I mean, why why pay me to argue with me? You know, right. Do that on Facebook. You right. know, um, <laughs> and, and all of those factors matter more to me than what the size of your portfolio is. Now, that being said, if you have, you know, eight thousand dollars, it's not really worth your time to work with an advisor. I mean, you should probably stay in some low cost investing solutions until you kind of build that up. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you've got a hundred, two hundred, five hundred, eight hundred thousand, we we have advisors here that absolutely will work with you. And they're not going to just be a salesperson who belongs to an organization spending millions of dollars to try and not get them regulated. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. You know how easy it is to tell well, I know you know, but uh, Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know how easy it is to pass a life insurance exam in this in this state, the average person of average intelligence can be a life insurance agent in a weekend. Right. I mean, is that really the person that should be giving you any advice on retirement at all? And also, a person who's giving you advice on retirement and only has access to a very small group of products and doesn't have access to a large amount of solutions that are in our industry is not who you want to work with because then you're working with someone who only has limited resources to help you. Yep. I mean, it's kind of like if you were going to go buy a house for the first time Mm -hmm. and you never bought a house before, you, you know, you need a house, you know, you've got some plans to grow your family and stuff. So you sit down with a real estate agent and instead of the real estate agent asking you a bunch of questions about how you're going to use the home, how long you're going to live there, you know, all of the are school districts important, everything, right? Instead of all of that, you walk in, the real estate agent introduces him or herself and says, have I got the house for you? And drives you down the street to this two-bedroom ranch with one bathroom uh, and, and then proceeds to basically spend the next hour telling you why that is the house you absolutely should buy without ever talking to you about what you're even looking for. It's it's absurd. We, yeah. we would do it in no other industry, but for some reason, we have these lobbying organizations spending tens of millions of dollars to try and keep life insurance agents able to give you retirement advice, and I use the word advice very, very loosely in that situation, to sell you products, and they don't want regulation. They don't want people looking over their shoulder. They want to be able to sell you whatever they want to sell you, whether it's in your best interest or not. And, and personally, I think it's disgusting. And in the same breath, they want the people people who can really help you in a larger scale overregulate it. Right. They <laughs> they want people like us to have more regulations and they would prefer to have none. It's yes. great great world. Um all right, coming up we're going to talk about why a trust could be a great estate planning tool even if you are not rich right here on the Keep Your Money show. The ups and downs of a roller coaster are fun for some people, but maybe too nerve-wracking for others. The same is true for the ups and downs of the stock market. If your palms sweat when the market fluctuates, it may be time to reevaluate your investment choices. The ride to your financial future shouldn't keep you awake at night. Call the Keeping Your Money Show at 1-888-98-MONEY to get off the roller coaster and onto solid ground. 